Good evening, everyone. I'm called to a uh, meeting for the uh, Town of Old Saverick Zoning Commission for Monday, April 15th, 7 p.m., Town Hall, first floor conference room. Um, roll call. Uh, myself, Mark Calderella, chair. Jerry Lewis, vice chair. John Henry, secretary. Um, Bob Freeman, regular commission member, along with Laura Gregg. Hi, Laura. Uh, An alternate, uh, Michael Kelly, plus our ZEO officer, uh, Chris Costa, and our clerk, Joanne Galley. In the audience, we have eight attendees and nobody online at the present time. Uh, regular uh, business uh, minutes from our last meeting, which was Monday, off April 1st. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Is there a second? Second, second by Jerry. Is there any discussion or corrections? No. Not seeing any. Move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne, for, as usual, the nice work. Uh, any correspondence other than what we have for this evening? Okay. So moving forward to continue public hearings, we have an application for a uh, the Wilkins Garden Center for special exception use. Uh, the applicant has withdrawn the application um, and is going to uh, seek a variance at uh, ZBA. Moving on to public hearings, 707 Boston Post Road application for special exception use to modify a parking lot to allow for reallocation of tenant space for H&R Block and a Goodwill drop-off center. 707 Boston Post Road, Assessor's Map 36, Lot 101, Shopping Center B2 District, Pedestrian Node, Owner DF Shoreline LLC, Agent Stewart Fairbank PE. Mr. Stewart. Hi, uh, for the record, Stuart Fairbank uh, with Angus McDonald, the Sharpen Associates. Um, the owner is uh, DF Shoreline LLC. One of the members of the LLC is here, David Flynn. Uh, also, his legal representative, Alan Turner. Uh, this is the, um, the little shopping center uh, in the triangle between Elm Street and Old Boston Post Road, the little convenience store right on the corner in the tight spot of the wedge. Uh, up to the upper right and left is the Old Sacred Shopping Center, Shopping Center 2. And then uh, Lynn Street crosses, uh, you know, 150 feet or so uh, behind and to the rest of the, of the property. I think those of us who've been in town for a few years know this has been a, um, you know, active center for a really long time, just as a point of interest or maybe to date myself. Um, if you recall, the Department of Motor Vehicles was in the big building back 50 or so years ago. I got my driver's license here almost 50 <laughs> years ago in that parking lot. So there's been all kinds of, of businesses that have rolled through this. Um, right now, there's an H&R Block, a uh, CBD store, um, dentist, a hair salon, and a pastry shop. This is in the large building. I forgot to mention the property is about 1.6 acre total. There's two buildings. The bigger building that I think we all really associate with it is about 16,800 square feet gross, but it has a large overhang that accounts for almost 2,000 square feet around the perimeter. So the real usable space in the building is uh, a little over 14,000 square feet. And a smaller building that uh, was Webster Bank is about 1,800 and but 1,829 uh, square feet. Um, so this is a this uh, uh, map is representative of what the property looks like today. Um, shows the parking layout. Um, if you know, I'm sure almost everybody's been there. But basically, practically every square inch of the property is occupied by pavement. There's nowhere to go. Uh, we can't expand. Um, you know, pavement or effectively reorient it um, where there are where there are pinch points. So the reason that we're here tonight is that H and R Block uh, has a contract to shift their lease to what was the bank building, and then the owner has a contract with Goodwill for a drop-off center. It's not a sales point; it's a drop-off center. So people would bring in their donations and. Uh, 
building. They have two employees in the building. Employees gather the, the, uh, the goods up and take them inside. Um, they are also limited. Uh, I know uh, in talking with uh, town staff a while ago, she, she mentioned that, you know, there'd be a concern. What if people leave, you know, stuff outside? I, it's always possible somebody can do it. But one of the provisions in the lease, I think it, it holds true for everyone, but it's pertinent to goodwill, is that nothing can be left outside. That there's a there is a clause in their leases, so it is enforceable. So that the uh, the owner can go and say, "Look, you can't." If it happens, but just want to point point that out. So the reason that we're here is, uh, I'm not sure that I really agree with it, but you know, there's a um, the zoning enforcement officer contends that it's a change in you know change in use because there's. The H and R block is moving to the bank, and the goodwill is coming in. Um, but the owner does want to um, do everything he can to to improve the site, try to work with the work with the town. The but really, we're in a pinch point here because you know, goodwill and and um, H and R block have to shift positions. So we're really hoping we can expedite and move along. The the basic proposal here we said we don't have anywhere to go we don't have additional property where we can put pave the paving goes to the property line to the property line within you know 18 inches or a foot within 18 inches or a foot over here the building is up against the back property line um, i've forgotten what's here but you, you can see the pavement goes right around now we do show the existing sidewalk on uh, Boston Post Road, and the town does have that grant money. What our understanding is, the sidewalk will be constructed across here. These came right off of Jacobson's plan, so this is an accurate depiction of what's what's planned out on Elm Street. Boston Post Road again already has the sidewalk. But what we've tried to do is lay out the parking <clears throat> as best we can geometrically. There are still pinch points. There is no way around it. There are parallel spots here and here currently. We propose to continue to use them. They are functional. People do use them. Simply saying the regulations say no is just, you know, you're just giving up a, a space that, that is functional. Um, we would be able to uh, Put in some plantings or street trees. I think there are four proposed street trees. Those are the red, red oaks, I believe, that are that are being proposed as uh, part of the uh, 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 sidewalk installation. And then in some interior landscaping. There's a planting list over here, but landscaping in, in front of the small building, some landscaping in an open area up against the building, and. Um, a couple of islands that we can delineate with. We can add curbing on top of the existing paving and put the plants in there. Um, they would primarily be in pots for the summertime because it's in a really exposed area. In the wintertime, the uh, snow plows are going to, you know, we put trees and stuff, they're just going to get decimated. So I think it makes the most sense to put them in, in pots. Um, there's, uh, right now, if you go out there and you look, there's the primary dumpster location is, is out in here. So we're also, and I use that in the, in the past tense, the work of the goodwill drop-off box and some other boxes, those have been removed. So we would propose new dumpster location here, which would be a screen dumpster. Here's a screen location, white PVC fence, and a second one over here next to the space that is occupied by the goodwill. We think that makes sense, but it's also a reasonable spot to put a, to put a dumpster where the truck can get in and out. Turning movements for a, you know for trucks and things are it's tight in here. Uh, it always was and there's just no way around it. So um, <clears throat> I think you have a statement of use. It was amended today to explain a little bit about hours of operation. Um, it's, it's tough, I, I think, to, to say, hey, this is exactly what's here because, again, effectively, it's a shopping center. This has been 
I would say every two or three or four years, new tenants move in and out of this, and it's always been that way. And I guess we would have to think it'll, you know, that would continue, you know, to some extent into the future. I know they'd like to have long term tenants, but, you know, that's business. So it does move along like that. But anyway, that's the, um, you know, statement of use explains the hours of operations. I think they talk a little bit about how many employees. As I said, we know Goodwill only has two. We know that for the last week or so, for instance, H and R Block, you know, is doing their they're doing big business. But tomorrow morning at this, you know, about eight o'clock tomorrow morning, it's going to be pretty lonely. Um, so there are there's a you know there is a little bit of a seasonal component to that you know, by virtue of the nature of the business. But in general, you think about H and R Block, um, they're not you know they don't have as many people on staff as a bank would have. Had. I have a question about the drive-through portion of that. They'd like to they'd like to keep that, and H and R Block likes it because. You know, people can drive right through there. Now they can you know, pick up their return, drop off their return, do whatever, drop off their materials without having them in the park. They'd like to maintain it. Who knows, you know, down the road, who knows if somebody else, you know, a bank wants to come back in. I, I just don't know, but it doesn't make sense to get rid of it um, when it does sort of serve a very you know, useful purpose for, the, for those tenants. Were there any plans to change the configuration? Because I see there's there's two lanes. And I think if I remember the bank had an ATM machine and a drive up window. And so do you have any plans to change that? We were, we were just going to leave it the way it the way it is. It doesn't benefit us. If we do take them, if we do take them out of here, we've still got to have the lane. You look in here, the lane is is still only about 24 feet wide to get you know vehicles to you. It, it doesn't do anything for you, short of tear, you know, tearing part of the building off, which, you know, that doesn't make sense either. So just for, for the record, for clarification, that um, the reason that you were asked to come this evening, uh, two points. One, because it's a uh, special exception, because uh, it's one located in a pedestrian node, uh, which is in section 32.2.6, okay? And the other one as previously discussed was uh, a change from the uh, uh, previous special exception. Uh, so those are the two reasons why it tripped that view to be here. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I'm hoping, we're not trying to be, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but for clarification, I don't think there's a change to to anything from what it what it was. I don't think there was ever a special exception that spoke to H and R Black, for instance. It talked about a building. It had a building and it had a bunch of parking, but that was about it. And it's been a revolving door for many years. You know, witness well, tenants, the DMV. Tenants will change. Yeah, and I'm saying so. So the tenants change, and that's what we're talking about here. Is a tenant. It's a it's a tenant change. But but I, I mean, those are no those, those are the two points that would have tripped. Yeah. The, the, well, the so rationale that, was, that was our question is I wasn't sure that it was really tripped, you know, well, but we're, we're here. They're trying to work along and well, you know, we're trying to we're, I'm not trying to be argumentative at all. We're just trying to state the facts mm -hmm. and then review the application yeah. with you to try and find uh, the appropriate uh, channels to be able to proceed uh, for both the town and for the applicant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you well, just to give you the history, the last time this property was in front of the commission was in 1992, and the parking <clears throat> for the site was, I'm not really sure how they calculated it. Um, it's non-conforming. We know that the property owner's here. Um, he's got two tenants that are new tenants. One's moving in and the other one's moving out. But the other thing is that we do have some changes in parking. So... The Webster Bank had a parking calculation at one space for 250 square feet. That's now changing to an office, which is one space two, for 200. And then the Goodwill was a retail location in one space for 175. So I think what has happened over the years, so for example, the pursuit of pastry, there was once a bagel shop there. That was a special exception. I brought it to the commission. 
um, when Pursuit of Pastry moved in. But the commission overall, as you go up and down Boston Post Road, we've been requiring more people to businesses and property owners to come in with these these changes now that we have pedestrian node regulations and we do have some changes in parking. So I did bring along just for reference in case you know if you wanted to refer back to the 1992 special exception, but I don't even understand how the parking calculations were done in 1992. <laughs> and that's where yeah. Stuart and I um, started as a baseline because I don't we just we know that there were less. <laughs> there were less, and then yeah. some were kind of painted in, and things were moved around, and that's where we are today. Yeah. So that's how we got. Uh, one question I would have for you um, is the proposed new tenant. What are they? What are you're what? saying? It's a drop off. It's a location, but yeah, what, what, what are they? Oh, I understand what goodwill is, but what are they performing inside? So there's two employees. Will there be retail sales? No, that's what there's no retail sales. And they collect, they collect, gather, package, and then it's shipped back out. So is it warehousing? No, I don't believe it's warehousing. Is it warehousing? Because yeah. 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 uh, it's I'm, I'm, and distribution to another warehouse facility where they sort stuff for the good ones. They like to have a nice, well located retail location where people from the community can drop drop off their agents. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority, because I, I was you know, obviously concerned. I'm sorry, could I ask you to identify I'm yourself? Sorry, David Flynn. Okay, thank uh, you. Um, you know, I was concerned with vetting it, of course, on my behalf for, the, for who we're having on the property, before I even knew we had to come to, to a meeting like this. And, um, you know, moreover, I've been told, I even spoke with the CEO of Goodwill, we got conference calls, and, and the what was been told to me is that the vast majority of drop-offs are actually people walking in the door and they have, you know, oftentimes small amounts of stuff they're dropping off just in a retail fashion. So the so um, someone like myself would, would drive up to donate whatever it was. So it would be processed, brought in into the building, correct? Yes. And then rehandled like desk and they you bring it right, in. and then rehandled in some format. Yes. And then stored. And then shipped at a later date. Yes. Okay. So, to me, it seems like it's closer to a warehousing operation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the other commissioners view this, but we don't have a um, standard for a process such as this. Well, they like the re it's my primary. Oftentimes, in these situations, we have other tenants in other buildings where this takes place, and oftentimes, <clears throat> it's less about what's happening in the building really than having that facade. They want to have that facade where, hey, here we are. People know about us. It's sort of like a form of advertising, so people know where to drop things off. So they try to find a great location, and then they have the facade. They have their the big sign, and people know it's there. So it's, it, I think that's what it's primarily about because they were far less concerned. Actually, they started looking initially at the bank building because the, you know that was what was released as soon as we purchased the property mm -hmm. because Webster had left and. You know, I thought we were, we were going to get a bank right away. That's a different story. We, we probably still could get a bank, but in this process, I had tried to accommodate a tenant who's been there a very long time, H&R Block. She's been on the property for about 20 years and she had no lease. So I, you know, worked out for her to move to the bank building, which is a really great location for her. Small location, suits her fine. And um, I was able to you know, bring Goodwill's interest from the bank over to that space. So they don't really need that amount of space. They really don't. I mean, the bank was half as much space. They just want that facade, the drop-off point. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, too, maybe to clarify a little bit of the discussion of warehousing. I mean, warehousing, I think, and if, you know, if you were to really look at the typical definition of it, it's, you know, the intentional storage of material for some period of time. The goodwill trucks are small box trucks. So they, you know, this isn't like tractor trailer backing up and filling up. So in other words, it comes and goes pretty quick. It's a pass through right. operation well, as opposed to- To me, that's the definition of a warehouse. Bringing stuff in, preparing it, and you're shipping it out, whether it goes out in a van or it goes out in a semi-trailer. So warehousing in the B2 uh, district is not allowed. Okay, um, retail is, but there's no retail there. 
from what you're saying. So that that's where I, I'm stuck right at the beginning on it. I don't know how the other commissioners feel, but um, trying to understand what it is, which we have a clearer picture of at the moment, to look at the regulations so that it would work, there's a breakdown there. It's it's just, it's described as retail in this right. application materials we have here, but if there's no because retail, there's no other, then it's not well, retail. Retail's changing a bit. You, know, you go sort of like uh, you know when you go to buy a Tesla, you're going in and you're you're not actually leaving with a car. You're you're getting this a kiosk. So you know I spend more time than I want to admit reading about retail and how it's changing and how retail's going to be in 20 years. And really, what's super valuable to a lot of these tenants is that kiosk. That, that the signage, the frontage, people know it's there and they can go and interact. Right, there's a, certain... there's a brand to the goodwill yeah. there. And people understand what goodwill means in terms sure. of donations and stuff. If they were looking for a warehouse, I can assure you they would find space for a third of the cost. Right. But, industrial it, but that pro the product that's being left there is not being sold there. For the, for the, for, at, at any point. No, we, they, probably would, we, we, they probably would sell if we suggested it. Maybe they all come to store there. Because, and, and there's well, no so, retail, so, there's well, no, it's, it, it's, a, it's a warehouse processing. So, so to simplify this then, if we go back to Goodwill and ask them to set it up as a retail, then we've solved this problem. You, you have to determine, you're the applicant, you have to determine what it is that you're, but I'm, that you're asking so, for. So, I mean, retail you're, is you're allowed, right, obviously. Your other tenants are retail. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, but <clears throat> certainly welcome to hear from other commissioners on that. Mr. On that Chairman, I, I think that you're, you're, my name is Alan Kerner, I'm counsel for David Flynn and his group. Well, I, I think you're, Taking a warehousing concept, because I, I write a lot of leases, and when I write warehouse leases, they're for much larger facilities. This is this is a donation facility. The whole purpose for Goodwill mm -hmm. to be here is to have a place that's convenient in the community for people to drop off goods. They're not warehousing. They ship them out. They, they, they don't have a lot. It's not a big facility. So a warehouse is where you store goods, perhaps for an indefinite period. You store inventory for resale. That's not what they're doing here. It's a drop off. The, the, the product will, and, and it's just a new point, the product will go out to be resold elsewhere. Very quickly. Okay. They're, so they're, they're, so, they're, they're, so they're it not, is similar again, yeah. to that process. That, that's it, all it, I have. To me, it's a drop off, not a, <clears throat> not a warehouse. Lori? I think of it as a staging area. I've seen these Goodwill um, drop off points in the past. They're usually small drop off your stuff and you just assume that the people inside are going to turn it around, probably sort it. And well, well, it's going to get sorted. They're, 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 going to, they're going to break, send it. I mean, I've, I've written Goodwill leases in various places for their retail stores. This is where they get a lot of their inventory. And one of the issues is that I had to sort of convince them to take this large amount of space. As I said, they were interested in the 1,500, I think, roughly square foot, very small bank space. And that's including the vault, I believe. So I had to convince them because they were very eager to be in this location. So they sort of resigned themselves to the 3,000 square feet or whatever it is. They don't, they don't need that much space. <clears throat> then why, why does H&R Block have to move H into Webster Bank Building, which is very small for them? I don't understand. I mean, H&R Block has been there for years and it's big um, i don't know how they're all going to fit into the webster bank building why can't why can't um goodwill go into the webster bank building i mean why does h and r block have to move well, out I mean, as, as, as the owner of the property that's how i set up the leases with tenants uh, i don't know well, well, i think what, really she's, what she's asking is h and r block wanted to go to the bank no, I don't. I'm not asking if they wanted to. I can't imagine them wanting to go to the bank when it's very, very small for their the business that they do. They've been at, at, in their space for years. 
So why are they moving to the bank building, which is much smaller? Is that a matter of visibility? Yeah, I, I don't know. They've been doing business for a long time. I don't know if they so need visibility. The I just don't understand. My, my, my point with the regulations would be that this is not an intensification. <clears throat> You're taking an existing tenant from one spot of the property and moving them to another spot of the property. That seems to be within the purview of the landlord on uh, how to rent his property. I'm just asking. It's a permitted use. Well. <laughs> well, the tenants will sign leases. That's the line. There we are. Yes. Well, the the uh, statement of use, along with the amended version, um, certainly the appeal needs clarification as to what. We were just talking about here for the last 10 minutes as to what what is the operation that's going to function there clearly you're you're uh, stating it's going to operate only monday through friday nine to six no weekends is that correct is that right? it, it says nine to six monday through friday correct yeah so that's what they're going to operate um and the statement of use as, as presented uh we have a date on this uh four three twenty four it doesn't 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 specify what Goodwill is going to be doing. No, it doesn't specify it at all. No. What it, what it, it mentions doing. what's there. It mentions right. what was there in the past, right. but it does not mention what you're proposing to bring in that is different. That has to be in the statement of use. Yeah. Um, what measures, if on a weekend, people that drive by, if they see it's closed, they leave it on a sidewalk. They leave it close by. How is that well, going to be controlled? Well, I know you wrote in, in the amended use. That's incredibly important to me. I mean, just to back up a, a minute, a lot of the things that we're talking about and uh, that Chris, uh, Chris was great to deal with and, and, and kind of told us what the town likes. And a lot of the things the town likes is things we were, we were wanting to do anyway. So we, we you know, look to buy a property and improve it. And make it fancy and high end, and we want to have like you know those components, you know, nice landscaping, nice signage, and, and, and you know turn the property around because it's not very attractive right now. So one of my you know one of my biggest concerns, regardless of any of uh, your input, is tenants leaving things around the property. That's why we have in the lease, and of course we you know we only have so much power. I mean, we, but we put in the lease, you know, it's it's in there. They cannot have anything outside, even for retail purposes, never mind junk or garbage. They, they can't have anything outside to sell for any reason. Right. In, in, in the amended version, you uh, quoted your lease. So they'd be in violation of rights. But we all know that um, what we want and what happens doesn't necessarily always take place. And particularly on a, on a uh, location such as a drop off. If people are so inclined, hey, I have it, I want to get rid of it. It's Sunday, that's not my problem. They leave it at the door, that it can get messy looking. We don't, I control the properties pretty closely. Right. Myself. Is that going to only be monitored Monday through Friday in terms of, uh, if, you know, by a Sunday morning, there's 10 bags out front or something of that nature? Well, if it was, a, if it ever became a problem, which I don't suspect it will, they were in a pretty crisp operation, in my perception. And we have, you know, for example, I have a property in, in Avon. You know, we have a beautiful Goodwill store. I go there. It's it's a very crisp operation. Uh, Route 44 in Avon, Connecticut. Um, if it became an issue, we would immediately nip it in the bud. And Alan would okay. Because we know you know, we know that drop boxes anywhere it doesn't have to be in Saybrook. When they get full, sure, people this leave their stuff boxes. out. So we don't want to see that happening yeah. in a plaza particularly to the level that you're looking to escalate it Absolutely. to, okay? So that's obviously a concern. But mine too. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't be, you know, a drop box, absolutely, that, that does happen. I think this is a little different when, it's a different type of thing. We have a property up the street, actually, um, and we lease to a local charity called Estuary. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually very, very similar mm -hmm. you know, to, to Goodwill. And they're great. Um, you know, by the way, these are also you know charitable organizations. These are these are they run a you know, pretty good business. Um, we have no issue whatsoever with any drop-offs like that. So we have a case study a mile up the road that we've never had an issue. Okay. Commissioners, you have other questions? 
I have some questions regarding the gross flow area numbers that are part of this application. In the uh, zoning data table, it has gross flow area as uh, 16,069 square feet with two asterisks that tells me that that data was taken from the Town of Old Sabra Vision Appraisal website. And yet, in your table for parking calculations, it has gross flow area for all of the individually allocated businesses. And if you add those up, you get a different number. You get 15,450 instead of 16,069. And then if you measure gross flow area of the actual buildings themselves, you can get a different number for gross flow area according to our definition of how it should be determined. So what is the correct gross floor area? As I said, as, as because I knew I was going to ask that. That was the first thing out of my mouth. Remember that when I said 16,843 is the big building yeah. and 14,258, not including the camp. You take the canopy. Now, the big building includes the garage, that attached garage on the back. No, you, I you, think that's you what, said earlier. I think you, that's, what, yeah, I think that's what was omitted on the original one because the big building is... You know, when you look at it, it's obvious the garage is. Right. You said earlier the useful space in a big building is a little over 14,000 square feet. And yeah, that's so it's so, so what we're what getting. I, what and I'm remember, asking, we're measuring the outside too. But I, I understand yeah. all the so, different ways yeah. of arriving at a number. Yeah. But our definition say the gross flow area is measured to the exterior wall of the building. And, and so, what that. is the correct number for gross flow area? For this application, well, gross floor is 14,258 on the big building. The coverage, building coverage is 16,843 because it's got the, there's no walls. The overhang, the overhang is just a, an overhang. Uh, just just we, know, we know the overhang well, doesn't count in gross floor area, it does count in building and structure coverage. I'll get to that later. All right, so we'll come back to that. But for gross floor area, then we have a number that comes from uh, the, the definition for the big building and another number for the smaller building. All right, now, as to how those square feet in the gross floor area are allocated, we have not been shown a floor plan, which should be part of a site plan review according to our regulation. That's in section 51. And let's see, I, I, can, I can say to the specific number if you wish, but it's in there. And so without a floor plan, I can't actually justify or, or, or uh, correlate your stated allocation of square footage to the various uses. I'd like to see a floor plan that allocates the gross floor area as defined in our regulations to the individual uses. And then those individual uses feed back into the parking calculation. And what you have in the table provided here is uh, the total proposed spaces, including handicap, is 87. But if I count the parking spaces on the site plan, I don't get 87. You want an example of where? Right here at the northern end of the big building, there are parallel spaces along the Elm Street <coughs> landscape part there. And um, it says three in the little circle, P3, but there are only two depicted on this plan, and one of them can't count if this is a two-way uh, access aisle, because then it's the, if the vehicle is there, there's not 24 feet okay. between it and the wall of the building. Okay. So those two out of three don't count. Now you're down from well, a, I got your okay. Well, let's let's just hold on. You're you're on a roll. I know you're on a roll here. I don't well, want those to, don't but, work. The but, one by the dumpsters doesn't but work. Sure. But let's let's just stop for a minute and back. The bottom line here is there's nowhere to go. The lot. I'm is asking the lot for accuracy, and, and then I'll look at a bottom line. But right now there is no bottom line because the lines are everywhere. Well. And I, as I said, we built on what is already there, and we're trying to reutilize those that are already that are already striped. So as much as we can, you know, I said let's not throw them away. You correctly point out that there, they are twenty-four foot wide aisles. That's exactly what I said in the first thirty seconds, trying to answer <clears throat> the questions ahead of time. So 
Bottom line is there's a couple of spots here where there aren't, but it's the, you know, it's the most that can be done. The, you know, I mean, the question that I guess I'm, I'm asking is with respect to the question at hand of trying to move the applicant along, do it isn't the whole idea is do the best you can. It is a pre-existing non-conforming site. If you have an idea for how it should be laid out, say it, say it, but I tell you, we tried a lot. We tried a lot of ways. We'd love to get more spaces, but they aren't here. I understand your motivation. You're trying, part. trying to do the best you can. From the commission standpoint, we're trying to do the best we can. And that means to get accurate information as part of the application that reflects what it what it's supposed to give us. Gross floor area okay. is a so, number that is not easily determined here, and I can't see it allocated properly by a floor plan. You haven't given that to us. The parking calculations, be whatever they may be, to the best that you can do, don't work. The numbers here don't match the numbers here. We're looking for consistency. Yeah. That's our job, is to record what's applied for that's self-consistent, and I don't have that. Yeah, okay. Um, I think the parking does add up. I think you're not counting the two in the garage, but that's why you're well, that's it's one of the questions I have on the parking it's okay. the garage. Not even us, you know, well, this is part of the conversation that we want to have to find you've come to present what you have. We understand that we're as Bob just explained, we have to do our job in positioning that to see. We have to have accurate information so that we can make a determination of what, what the right thing is to do. He's asking a simple question on a couple of points. You know, I look at this plan and you have the existing building, but it doesn't tell me how much pursuit of pastry has or, 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 the, uh, or the dentist. There's no divisions in here showing the square footage. Mm -hmm. So how can I calculate this based on that? I think, I think the reason that there's a little confusion is the, the numbers in the parking calculations came off of the lease square footage. So the leases say you get so many square feet. Inside a building, you know, people measure different than the zoning commission inside, you know what I mean? So the, we the don't care how you come. measure inside the yeah. building. Well, what we, if, what we, it's it, in yeah. the book. It's in the book. Gross floor area is in the book. Do the, do the layout, the floor plan. That's in section 51. Point six, point four, point B, point two, part C. Floor plans are required as part of a site plan submission. 51.6.4, B2, part four, requires that you provide us with the total lot coverage. I didn't see that anywhere here. And from the total lot coverage, then from the uh, building and structure coverage percentage, which is provided, then I can figure out the total landscaping which I didn't get here has a breakdown number. All of these things are required as part of our regulations and we don't have them. And in order for things to get up to speed in 2024, because of the various parts and pieces of its history that have led to this condition, it's time to get a snapshot that has things accurate and up to date. And, and using the regulations, that we have, we are expected to get these pieces to make for a complete application. That's in 51.5. And 51.5.2 is about conformance. That's a sub part of this whole discussion. But there's so much more that has to go into an application than we have here for us to make a proper determination as to what is applied for and the degree to which it conforms, and we understand the previously existing non-conforming situation. That's part of our job is to make it all work together, but we don't have enough pieces. I see you've got two parking spaces that are in the right of way. I can't say that Old Saybrook Zoning Commission has the right or power authority to approve parking spaces off-site in the state right away for room one. That's not my purview. And so if they're there and if you have a, uh, what's it called, a, uh, a, a permit for intrusion into the right of way for your parking, and if you show that to us, then okay. 
but you're counting them and they're in the right of way. They're not on the lot. Our regulations require that your parking be on the lot. If I may, um, how long has this building been here in this configuration? More than three years, <clears throat> I believe. Well, <laughs> under, under CGS 813, it's a non conforming use. Are you proposing a change to a non conforming We're not proposing a change. You're proposing new tenants and changes no, no, no. that not under the statute. Calculation. So if you go back not and you look the at statute. the 1992, I, I make I, the difference. I, well, again, I don't think we're proposing any change to the existing structure. We have, we're moving one existing tenant from one spot to another, and we're putting another permitted use into another building, into another, into another slot. But I, I understand what you're asking for, but what, you're, what you seem to be saying is make all of these spots conforming to the present regulation. Where that's they, not what he's saying. They, well, that's not what he's saying. Because you know, you, you're questioning the count. Right. Not we have section 10 in our regulations about non-conformities. There's a lot of them on this property. And we do our best to comply with such section 10, realizing that we can't make all the non-conformities go away, but we have to have them in the record so we know which ones are there today and that not increasing for the next application I, down I, the road. I, I very frankly, sir, think you're overreaching. We don't. Ask, we're not asking anything of this applicant that, that we don't ask of every other applicant. We do business in all sorts of towns. Well, this is old safer. Yeah, yeah. We're not another town. Mr. Chairman, okay. that's why, Mr. Chairman, I, I respect you what your position is, and I respect anybody who comes and sits on one of these boards. You're giving up your time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Great thing. Well, yeah, but we you have an existing property. And you're you seem to be asking to know the exact measured square footage of every tenant in the building now, so you can calculate the parking requirement. I don't I don't necessarily see that that was ever communicated well, to my engineer, so that we could have gotten. I don't know what you communicated to your engineer. So the book and the meetings that you would have had with Lane Use Department sure. would have done that. But you know you're talking about parking, you, but yeah, you have a bump out on the building. Which I'll say is on the east northeasterly side with a roll up door, but yet you're showing three three parking spaces in front of it. So how can you <coughs> operate it as a as a drop off for larger than normal size product and have parking spots in front of it? So there's three parking spaces there that are that I would question. The idea there is that that's for the the um, in your parking calculation table the, for the. Proposed retail store group will, as it says here, 3,000 square feet divided by 175 square feet per parking space is equal to, you have 17 spaces. It's 17.14 spaces. And according to our regulations, 62.4.4 part D, you aggregate the parking spaces individually as your table tries to. But in the gray box right next to that, it says you round up. If you get a fraction. So it's not 17, it's 17.14, which makes it 18. And so there's another instance of your data doesn't comply with the regulation. Never mind the site plan doesn't comply. The numbers are all over the place. They're not consistent among themselves. Well, I'll be the fall guy here. Obviously, done business here for a long time and prepared a lot of site plans. But as I said, I didn't expect this level of scrutiny. I thought there would be an understanding that existing businesses that had been there for a very long time and which had tenants moving in and out of the building <clears throat> without having to ask, come to the commission, for the last 32 years? So there are many of them that did go to the commission and I brought but them to the commission. They go through but, special exception. And but since the commission adopted the pedestrian no regulations and things have gotten. We just want to have a shift move, see, move nice times around right. the so, shopping center. So <laughs> we talked about you know, right. so, so our discussion was because there hasn't been a site plan approved since the last special exception in 1992 and there's areas that deviated from the 92 plan where people went out and spray painted 
one of the spaces that you're talking about, the baseline was the 1992 plan, trying to go through and show what the reductions in the nonconformity are. <laughs> So yes, it's not going to meet a hundred percent the zoning regulations right. today. It's not going to meet. There's some practicality. Well, and that's what I'm trying to let me finish. That's what we're we're looking at here today. But I think what Mr. Friedman saying is you've got two spaces here and one on an angle, and it says there's three parking spaces. You really can't use that as a parking space because it's going to go into your driveway entry. And and I think that's where we're going with the discrepancies and the difference in the non-conformity. And the one on the corner by the dumpsters in the northeast, sharp angled corner, that doesn't function as a parking space with a dumpster enclosure covering nine-tenths of, <clears throat> of the area. And it's not, it's not is it 22? There's a parallel spaces. They're supposed to be 22 feet long. And uh, they're not. Yeah, well, we we so get, we get you can't count them as parking spaces if they don't meet the requirements. That's all I'm saying. So how many spaces do we lose? Doesn't matter well, if you can put a car there; it has easy. to meet the rate. So what do you guys want us to do to the property? I bought it. I, I what do you want me to put in there? We're not telling you to put anything in there. That's well, not, our, not our job. Well, I, I, that's I, not our job. We're we're going well, through the space. We're going can't. through your application <laughs> according to the regulations. Well, I, I never dealt with space now. This is this is why people don't want to do business because you see, there's a certain practicality to all of this. All I'm looking so I, I do understand that the, the what you're looking for. Every point you're making, without getting into the weeds, I think you're making valid. Points and it's looking for numbers. I'm a numbers guy, I understand. But to sort of set that aside for a minute, I just bought a shopping center and I'm trying to lease it out to good tenants. Nothing outrageous. I'm not trying to. Starbucks was very interested. I said, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. We're not leasing the Starbucks. I don't feel like dealing with it. We're not doing anything outrageous here. And no, if it was used to use, it might not have been such a problem that caused mm -hmm. such a Technical well, why, examination. I've been told this by my good, Goodwill's not used to use. I think it is, though. So yeah, you, think, you created this. No, I think it is. And, and also, um, we can. there's more onerous uses. I mean, for example, a bank. I'm, I'm, the way we're doing this, if I put a bank in there, which I can do easily, for instance, put a new bank in where Webster was, that is a much more onerous and, you know, they have car stacking. You could end up with a situation like the Dunkin' Donuts where the cars are all stacked out. And we're putting a very benign use in there. It, you know, it, it, it's it's an accounting detail place. And uh, in the Goodwill, same thing. It's a very but function. Whether you're looking at it, whatever, functionality of it is two people in a very small space. It's very benign. You know, we're not doing any like a Jersey Mike's or a you know, a food that, would, that would be a restaurant, special exception. And we still be here talking about that, though, right? You, so, Rob, all I'm saying is these are pretty benign uses. They really are. The traffic, because I'm aware of that, too. I, I know what this is going to be like. And we just want to beautify the center. We want to make it nice. I'll, I sat with Chris, talked to her a bunch of times, as did Stuart. And the message was the town wants pretty, high-end looking properties. So do I. That's exactly what I want. So I, Chris and I communicated, and I kind of got the, the message that if, if we're willing to provide, to do these nice things at the property, this shouldn't be a problem being able to move tenants around within reason. And that's what we're looking to do. That's the practicality. We get all your numbers. We'll, Stuart will do it, whatever. But the, that's, the, that's the bottom line is we're looking to unify the center in any way you would like. We talked about trees and the type of trees and in any way you know, nice planter, a brick planter, all this nice stuff. Uh, even, I think we're going to cut out the parking lot and do, right, add planting trees. We're going to put some if you want. curbing and then, yeah. So rather than just stick tenants in there, we were going through the process and so, it worked. So we're kind of in a situation where it's great, Mr. Flynn has his tenants in the leases, but didn't come to zoning before. And now that we've tripped the special permit, we've been working together with it. But we also have a site that has a number of nonconformities, which we understand we need to address, but it also hasn't been reviewed since 1992. So I think we're on the same page, but part of what's tripping this is the changes in the uses which <clears throat> change the parking. 
we know we're not going to make it 100% compliant. I think we all agreed on that. It's trying to, to move forward to establish a baseline as we go through with tenants as they go in and out, as long as they're not a Jersey Mike's, which then is going to end up with a whole different parking calculation. But I think, you know, that's kind of the importance of the statement of use is trying to figure out how these uses work and where people are going to drop things off to make it clear. And I think that's one of the sticking points is... I mean, do they put bins outside? I mean, I think this is what the commission's, you know, asking for. Like, how, how does this work? I think we're ultimately, well, I also am a resident of Old City, Like, I have a cottage here. I like, I went down to the high end and pretty Main Street's looking right under the, for example, the hardware store um, retail center. We talked about that. What a beautiful job it is. Uh, they, they did there. But we, I think of our building looking a bit like that. We're going to paint it white. We have, you know, it, it's going to be high end looking. That's our goal. And I know there's more details to talk about, but that's just so you know, that's our goal is to make a high quality end product with a good mix of tenants. Right. We're, we're, we're not questioning that. Okay. But there's requirements that are needed in order to make proper zoning decisions based on the rules and regulations that we are asked to, to review. And there's a, a number of components on here that are missing. And we're not saying that we, you know you have to come into 100% compliance because it wouldn't be possible. But in order to make that determination, we need to know what's there today as a picture of time, not what was in 1992 so that we can review the regulations and then say, say to you, hey, these are some of the points we think that need to be addressed. There's no question you've done certain things on the layout here with more plannings, the islands and things like that. You've already identified what you're willing to do. So we know that more would, would be done if, if necessary, but we can't do our job with the information that's in front of us. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question for Stuart? Stuart, does the site plan show the existing parking spaces? Yeah, yeah, we have and, the and, existing, and, 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 we have the existing roughly, layout. Roughly, how many of those parking spaces are not? <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's the bottom line. Is we have parking spaces that are non conforming yeah. that are resisting. So the parking Do you spaces, want us to take them away? the parking spaces, some of them are there, deviating from the approved site plan, and we're just drawn on that. So areas, if you go back to the 1990 plan that were previously a dumpster location, became parking spaces. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is get a baseline because what happened from the previous approval and what the previous owner did and what's out there, they don't match. Okay, but, but my question for the commission is, do you want us to remove the non-conforming parking spaces from the site plan? We wanna know what's there. Well, we gave you what's there. And and this gentleman with the uh, engineers sit there is saying they, these, this space doesn't measure, it doesn't conform, this one's in the wrong place. This, I mean, I get it, he's right. But some of them and, could just and be so, simply and so what do you want us? What do you want us to do with those non-conforming spaces? We can make them non conforming. Well, some yeah. I think yeah. no, 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 we can't. We can make them conform. I, I some you can. Let, yeah, let me see if I can. You understand? You understand? I think what I think yeah. what okay. you guys are saying is give you a layout with as many parking spaces as can be put on the site, which are conforming to the regulations. However many that is, that's what you're asking for. Tell us how many you can fit. How many you got that, that meet the requirements? The regulations. Don't. Yeah. Don't give me numbers in one table that don't align with the number somewhere else. The statement of use has to have the same number as the parking calculation table, and they have to have the same number as the legitimate parking spaces yeah, that are with that. dimensional requirements and tell us how many you can fit. Really? We don't have that. Let him finish. Let him finish. I apologize. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So in you, that sense, the application is not complete. And we need a complete application. That's in section 51. Here's, here's my point. Right? You've got an existing building of 14,000 rentable square feet that has been fully occupied for the last 50 years. We are not changing 
We're not intensifying any uses that I can see by, by any reasonable definition. Because what you're saying is, is that, you know, are you going to impose upon us that we comply with the current parking regulation? That's because not we, what he's because saying. Because we can't. We know that. Okay. And but if everybody's on the same page and, and you understand that we can't comply. And we have and tenants, we have tenants so, moving in. They have leases signed and they're doing their fit out. They have building permits. You gave them the permission. Well, I that. did that and I actually shouldn't have done that because technically they should have gone through this public hearing process. Well, and you me, signed your leases. Yeah. And no, typically you wouldn't get a building permit because I wouldn't let them go through. But understanding you told both tenants they would be moved by May 1st. That's why I did that. I appreciate that. And we're here tonight with a very rush plan and no one's saying take away non-conforming. It's show conforming. Bob, is that what you're saying? Show conforming spaces and eliminate non-conformity even if it's a reduction in the number. Yes. If we understand that this site has pre-existing non-conforming conditions of several different types. We also understand that in our regulations in section 10, that they are to be reduced, if not eliminated, to the extent possible. Somewhere in between is the reality of this is a site which exists with non-conformities and it can be improved and it may still have some non-conformities, but there should be conformities that are reduced. And by so doing, then it may merit an approval under our regulations in section 51 and special exception, which this is a modification thereof. And we need to have accurate an accurate picture of what it is that will result. And this, is not it. <clears throat> Fast forwarding ahead, assuming that we get, you know, I assume the information Mr. Friedman is asking for is we can do very quick to, to, you know, ascertain that. Is there any, let's go fast forward and pretend we have that. Is there anything else to discuss in terms of improvements or things we're doing at the property that you might well, there is There's more than 20 parking spaces in this parking area, and so there should be light. We haven't had that discussion as to whether or not lighting on, on site is necessary. There are existing um, just to, there are existing wall pack lights on the smaller building and on the larger building. And are those fully shielded with regard to dark sky compliance? Um, what is the percent landscaping on this whole site? The total limit, the limit for total built, total lot coverage in the B2 district is 80%. It's going to be close, but with your added parking islands, maybe you have 20% landscaping, but I can't tell. I need the numbers. I could I could do it. I could do it, but it's not my job to do that. It's your job to give us the numbers. What else? Uh, the directional sign. I saw on the electronic but uh, on the Zoning Commission's web page, I saw pictures of the signs for the buildings, for the big building. Did I see a sign for the small building? I don't recall. Yes. But anyway, yes. yes. Okay. But I did not see a picture of this directional sign in the northeast corner. I need to know what that looks like and the dimensions yes. there as well. I didn't see that one. And it was it was listed in here as a goodwill direction sign. So we need to we need to know what that sign's going to look like and how big it's going to be and where it's going to be. I'm pleased to see that it's moved onto the property rather than off the property where it was in the existing stuff. That's that's a good thing. Uh, I would like to have some kind of a discussion uh, or more with regard to the two parking spaces which are on state property. I'd like to know about the landscaping again at the uh, northwest corner of the lot close to the big building where there are three proposed parking spaces and additional land trees over there. But I can't tell whether or not the, ex the pavement, it's a, it says parking to be striped as shown, but it doesn't tell me whether or not the existing pavement is to be removed and become landscaping. Those are the kind of details 
I can see they might go one way or the other here, but I can't tell from what I'm given. This property somehow or other has two pylon signs when it should have only one. So we're sensitive about the number of pylon signs. This directional sign better not sneak up into the category of a third pylon sign on site. Uh, there's a one pylon sign in, for the shopping center, and there's a very small marquee for the, the bank. Right, but is it, is it one lot now? I see one lot in this application before me. There's there's two pylon signs on one lot. That's not permitted. Okay, you call it a the no. Webster Bank sign. Yeah. You call that a pylon. The Webster Bank yeah. sign was that's what was there with Bond. It was, it, was, it, yeah. it pre-existed. Yeah. We know. They just pointing it out. There's two there. out. That's previously existing non-conforming. You could keep them, or it could be a non-conformity that you would seek to make less so and have only one pylon sign. For the lot, that's up to you. We already had that sign approved. Both signs were approved at the meeting. That well, that so so. I think you're taking the wrong way. So you went to the architect review board for the sign designs. This board ultimately approves the signs and what goes through architect review. All he's simply saying is that there's two pylons on the lot. Mm -hmm. Only one is allowed. It's always nice to see signs shrink in size and reduce non-conformity. Well, we are removing some signs because Webster Bank had signs like flanking the entire building, and we on um, the signs that were approved through. So, so, but to let me finish, he's saying we would not allow for two pylon signs, and what you have is non-conforming. So sometimes applicants reduce the size of pylon signs. I think that's what he was inferring. He's not saying take them away. He's just saying he's pointing out that that's one of the non-conformities. Sign height. Location dimensions, all in the book. ARB had some recommendations about changing some things. We did. Yes, right. right. So make sure it complies. Sometimes the ARB expresses wishes to change things which may not be in the book. So yeah. use their guidance, but the regulations, they don't get to change the regulations. The, the, the drop off. Well, going back to that, um, is the expectation from people who are dropping off to park, or do you? Oh, are, yeah, we talk a lot about that. Yeah. Are, are they going to pull up because you have you have a uh, existing fire lane there? Yeah, well, they park in regular spots, and they get in other places too. They park in regular mm -hmm. parking spaces in the shopping center, and they walk to the front door. Okay. That's the direction they'll be given, I presume. Right. Okay. Um, well, one thing for discussion, and the other commissioners can do this. You have some additional parking, four parking spaces placed uh, in front of the existing sign that's out front on on Route One. Right. Um, knowing how that traffic and utilizing that that plaza, uh, personally, you go in and out. You can go currently to the right and go to the left with the existing. Um, uh, or, or with the proposed parking spaces that you're uh, looking to put, uh, to add um, on the uh, eastern, easternly side of the, uh, of the sign, um, I would think for public safety purposes, consideration should be given to maybe extending the landscaping from the last parking spot to the, to the street and on the other side so it clearly defines an in and out so you don't have people taking a hard right Potentially hitting parked cars, a, a suggestion. Okay, you were asking what other things mm -hmm. would would the commission um, want to put out there in front of you, and that's what we're trying to do. And any uh, any other section fifty one is not like it's not light reading, but in fifty one point six point four B two D part four. It says all off street parking and loading access and circulation will meet the requirements of these regulations. And then you go into section 61 or two, which is parking, parking 62. 62. Parking, uh, 62. Yes, uh, section 62, and go by the parking regulations in that section. And then there's um, in the landscape section is where you find about interior parking lot lighting. So there's, it's like an onion. There's another layer. So, well, yeah. So th this is I think what we were alluding to early on. It's a rabbit hole that doesn't have a solution. 
because if we try to conform, make all of the parking spaces conforming, yeah. okay, if everybody agrees that that's it, okay, we can do that. But now that. we're talking about, well, maybe we want to look at lighting. Well, then we got to have islands for the lighting because you can't just stand out there in the middle of the park. Oh, and we're, then we're, well, just let me okay. finish. You're right. And then we're talking about landscaping. Well, okay, so if I got to back up and, you know, I'm saying where exactly does it end? And that's why I said, what? When you need to I speak up, this, sure. it's hard to hear. It is hard to hear. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Bob. Bob. Oh, so, no, sorry. So, um, um, so the question is, and this is why we did what we did, is because the, the rabbit hole has no end here. Once you go, you know, and you say, okay, well, let's look at, you know, making all of the spaces conform that leads you into lighting, that leads you into landscaping, you know, let's put in additional islands. And pretty soon the whole site shrinks down to where there's nothing left. And we know that that can't, that can't happen. So my, the whole point is, where is the line drawn? In other words, you, you know, you keep pointing to 51. You know, we've done how many site plans in this town? A lot of the big buildings in this town, we did, right? And when they're when they're new, we conform. You know, you design everything to conform with the regulations. The problem here is, without absent a absent a line of demarcation beyond which we you know we all agree we don't have to conform. If I have to go back and simply lay this thing out and say, here's a conforming site, it's it's a fool's errand, you know, because we know it can't work. It can't happen. So that's, I think, what we're saying. Don't is, make, just don't like, make it worse. <laughs> There's non-conformities well, here, and you know how many spaces are supposed to be on the lot. And if there are 73 in the existing lot, then make sure that you provide more than 73. But you may not well, be. Well, not sure. That's the point. Uh, yeah. Probably but that's what he's trying to say. Trying to say is the whole point. If it's 73 and you and you can't provide the required Let's number to show us what additional ones you can for us to review the entirety of it and say this would work. If it's less non-conforming, that's a good thing. You can't make it more non-conforming. We'll see. Mr. Mr. Chairman, here's, here's the problem that I'm having. Okay. This, by statute, is a non-conforming property. It has existed more than three years. The town has brought no action to it to enforce a regulation. What we're dealing here with is regulations which are incrementally added after the time when this was approved. So now you're saying conform with the new regulations. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, not asking you to just let me finish. I, I'm, I'm just looking at the parking requirement for the retail store of one space for seven for 100, one, one parking space per 175 square feet. That's 17 spaces required for the 3,000 square foot Goodwill store. We've got two employees, and we might have two or three people at any one time. That's five, six, eight people spaces, but you've got your requirement says 17. So can I just make so a point? I, I don't think we can ever conform to this. Can I make a point? I can understand there's okay. some frustration about the parking requirements, but there are the regulations, uh, and we can't vary them. Well, like, we no, my, we my can formally change, change them if we want to go through a change. But you have to recognize this is a non-conforming site, and you may not enforce your new regulations on this non-conforming site. No one's well, saying well, that, but let me finish. Let's so let's you weren't involved in the initial discussions of this. So the initial discussions went back to a 1992 special exception. There are changes here. And part of the reason for asking for an elaborate statement of use is that if the bakery has peak hours, it's six in the morning, there's flexibility too with the regulations with the time of the uses. So a lot of the questions here, and you updated late this afternoon the statement, if it was a little more spelled out and you do have that flexibility where someone has a peak hour, the other one, that's how it works. Like you said, each in our block, today is their peak day. There's people running in and out of there. We get they them. close at three o'clock. Like so this, right. is, this yeah. is part of the whole thing in trying mm -hmm. to describe the operations. I don't think anyone is saying it's gonna be 100% compliant. 
but there's things that have been put on this property since the last time it was reviewed that will work are not compliant and there's an opportunity to make them into safer parking spaces yeah or we're safer about, you know, I, you know we're, I I thought we wouldn't have any problem here we didn't think we'd have any problem I think like kind of seeing the forest through the trees here that some of we're not really talking about much is that we're taking the two there was a bank here intense use and there was the H and R block with a bigger footprint. We're putting in tenants that are less invasive, less people, less customers. I mean, to your point, Mr. Friedman, that's like you right, can't make it. We're going to make it worse. We're going to make it less of a problem. That's exactly what we're doing. So, I think he's just asking for that to be spelled out no, in the application. I'm just making the point that that's... So we're not getting into an argument of that space sure, was right. there since 1960 or whatever yeah. else. We understand it's not going to be compliant. <clears throat> I don't even understand how they put the parking in place in 1992 with the calculations of there, because I don't even think those were the regulations in 1992. I have no idea. So we're just trying to start a baseline and, and, and help you to get the property up to compliance, establish that, and go from there. I think it might also be, uh, Chris, uh, for the commission to seek um, uh, direction from our council relative to, and you know, I apologize, I don't remember your last name. Uh, Kerr. Kerr uh, on, his, on his statement of the statute that this doesn't apply. So that we have a, a clear understanding because there appears to be a little bit of a difference between where you sit and where we sit relative to whether this should be reviewed or not. Am I correct in that? I, I don't know that it's correct to say that it can't be reviewed, but what I'm saying is, is that you cannot require us to change it. So, so and, I don't, and, and again, this has been a retail building for generations. It's been a mix of uses and there's changes. I yeah. understand it's right. been right. but right. I it's understand. You know, and no one's did, no one is arguing about the yeah, but to, to, to say that we want to now examine whether we should be subject to a lighting requirement. I think what that's, that's I think I think the suggestion long after that, this place. So so why am I asking my engineer? I think the suggestion the is that, lighting. Oh no, I know that, and and we appreciate that. But I think the suggestions were to reduce nonconformities. You could shield the lighting. I know we had a discussion. You said at some point you're going to change all the lights. Well, we so it, not idea. now, but I'm just saying there's opportunities to do that. Well, not think... all, it's an opportunity, and that's fine. I mean, this, these are great, all great concepts. It's just that we have, um, you know, we have tenants who want to want to move in. They they want to move in any part of the community and start operating. And so we need to get the baseline, the and that. then. In the future, before we get into leases, we need to talk in about the, future, the special yeah. exceptions so we don't normally have we don't deal with this with towns where yeah. even very high end you know communities the, the, the normally you know moving a tenant is not yeah. this yeah. type of uh, you know we don't deal with this. So. Uh, that's our regulation. So so we could either continue this to our next regularly scheduled meeting based on what we discussed tonight and what we're asking for. Or you can proceed with the application this, e this evening, and the commission can vote on that. Would you like five minutes to come over? Right away, caucus. Okay, we'll take a five minute recess. Thank you. <clears throat> Pause that. Okay, get a pause it. Pause it and then. I'll call the uh, April 15th zoning commission meeting back to order at um, 817. 817. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we're going to request a continuance to the next meeting. Okay. Um, I, I do want to have some just understanding in my own mind that. Stuart's going to go back and revise the plan. Uh, but are we are we being asked to address lighting? Are we being asked to address no, let me, all let me, of these things that, that are in the regulation today? We're we're pointing out what the regulations today are. 
that you, that it would require that type of lighting. We're not saying that you have to have that. That's an option of the commission to review and say that. I don't believe, and I'm speaking as one here, okay, that, that we're gonna say to you, you have to have the light. I think the most gracious forms have been pointed out and what is being looked for to uh, work with you to achieve your goals and also find the, the necessary elements that can meet most of ours together. I think the, the comment on the lighting was, hey, we could, that could be something, but we're not saying that tonight. All right. <clears throat> let me let me suggest something. Let me, let me just suggest something again. I'm, I'm just going to go back to what I had said before, where I think can you hear? there's can you yeah. hear me? Sorry. Am I really behind this? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to suggest perhaps a framework of things that we can we can provide. I mean, the obvious low hanging fruit, um, you know coordinate all the numbers so the numbers all agree with who's got what in the building. I think it's pretty easy. We'll draw some lines on there where the walls, you know, where the mating walls are and everybody has their lease in the in the big building. Coordinate the square footages so with the parking and make sure that all of those jive so that that makes sense. And the you know the uh, gross floor area, maximum building coverage, maximum structure and you know ground coverage and so forth so that you know you can look at that calculate what there is for landscaping in the context of laying out the site with conforming parking spaces irrespective of what's there now and then if you gain a little bit of landscaping somewhere okay that's great you know but we'll calculate what there is beyond that i think it's just a spiral into, you know, I, we can talk about after you get a, you know, a, a layout with the parking space layout that looks like it conforms. If there's a spot where it makes sense for a light or something, maybe that's a discussion to be had, but I'm not sure it's going to make sense because it's such an irregular, you know, that irregular shape lot just doesn't lend itself to regular parking spaces and aisles and so forth. Everything is triangular. So then the distances are funny. I don't see how it's possible to put lighting up that doesn't spill over onto all the neighborhood properties or out on the both elements. You know, so anyway, point is there's that. Look at the signs. You had a question about the pylon side. Let's just see if we can maybe clarify those signs. I think they just need revisions from architecture review that's just showing the conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, that. Same, I'm not quite so sure. the signs went to architecture review yeah. board separately, and there were some suggestions. That's what. Oh, so make their yeah. Right. Just make their make their recommendations. Just right. have the sign company. They had four conditions. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think it's just to provide so, that with the for the next meeting. Yeah, there's sure. four four conditions. So, what is the date of the next meeting? Anybody remember? Um, Fifth, maybe. Fifth next meeting day. Next meeting day. May sixth. Sixth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. I, am I leaving something out? I'm, I'm trying to get in a framework where we can do it because otherwise we're going to shrink this thing down from where it looks stupid and everybody's going to say, "Why did you do that?" But, oh, no, I think you have it down, Mr. Flynn. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any question? All right. Yes. We do. Well, uh, because of the unusual circumstances that the tenant has already kind of been given the okay, the tenants have been given the okay, how do you recommend that I deal with that in the meantime? I want to do the thing you're saying, we're going to be hiring, you know, we're going to, Sue is going to continue with what you've requested, and we're working on this stuff, but how do we deal with that? To do, so... The tenants that are moving forward because you know you guys so, so you, you put forward. me in a very awkward position I didn't mean so to. i'm just saying so this is how just for the commission has laid mm -hmm. the land we started out meeting with the change of the tenants you had signed two leases for may 1st they needed to go through the process and to help you when i technically should not have issued or to let the building department issue the permits 
for the fit out, I did to help you along. So, I mean, at this point, you come in, you're working on getting this done. I mean, is H&R Block, you really think, going to be completely out and into a new building no. by May 1st? No. So, I guess what's, so I guess it's what, what, what are we worried about for May 6th? No, we're not really. But I'm just yeah. want to make sure that we're just understanding that this is going, that this process has been, of course, so, so typically when forward. someone comes in and the commission will probably be mad at me, but I put this on the agenda without even having a site plan to help the applicant out. Typically there's a period of 65 days to schedule a hearing. I was trying to do that with the time crunch and to help. And we appreciate that. that so, but I guess the thing is, I'm trying to figure out what the issue is with the permitting that I kind of stuck my neck out to help you with. What's going to happen if we continue to May 6th? Is your question, can you proceed with the changeover based on your lease of May 1st? Well, yeah, it probably won't come into play because we'll get these things resolved and we'll deal with, you know, I mean, May 6th, presumably everything's fine. I'm just kind of bringing I, that issue up. I would, I would believe, okay, and correct me if I'm wrong. That at this point, we've started the process. You understand we're going to continue it. There's additional materials that are needed. You've already started the process of the two tenants. The ZEO officer has allowed that to continue, which the commission will support. We're not stopping that. Okay. okay? We expect when you come on May 6th to provide us with the, the required information that we've been asking for, it should end at that point, and you're not going to have a okay. The town is always looking to enhance businesses and people willing to come to town. However, we're, we're, we're held by the rules and regulations of the Zoning Commission that the town enforces, right? Um, so the ZEO officer has found a way to work within those requirements to a valued property owner who is recently new to the town of Old Saber. So I, I would say to you, continue to proceed along the route you are, provided that you give us the information that we need on May 6th. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Chen. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Or three weeks. We have to do a motion, but you oh, have to oh, yeah, well, sorry, I got to do a motion, but right. since it, it, it Wait, is a public you hearing that we open up. Oh, yeah, seat yeah. mic. Okay, yeah. Jerry left at, at 8.20, uh, so we're going to see um, Mike Kelly as the, uh, an alternate, as the regular, as the fifth member of the Zoning Commission. That, Huh? You need a motion to no, I know that. I'm gonna, it's, I have to think. it's it's a public hearing, so we should. If there are uh, anyone in the public, either in attendance here in the room or online, willing to speak in in uh, favor of or opposition to the applicant, uh, please identify yourself, raise your hand online, or anybody in the audience. Not seeing anyone in the audience this time. Um, and there is no one online that has raised their hand. So at this point, I make a motion to continue the, uh, the 707 Boston Post Road application for special exception use to modify a parking lot to allow for reallocation of tenant space for H&R Block and a Goodwill drop-off center uh, to our next regularly uh, scheduled meeting of May 6th, of uh, Monday, May 6th at 7 p.m., at the first floor conference room, uh, Old Saber Town Hall. Is there a second? Second of Bob Friedman. Is there any discussion? Not hearing any of those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Passes 5 0 0. Thank you. Moving uh, forward to uh, new business, we have uh, item A, Live Shack. Application right. for modification. Yes. application for modification to special exception for a restaurant used to expand outdoor seating. 26 Bridge Street, Assessors Map 24, Lot 46, Saber Point 2, District Applicant John Bresco. Action, consider modification and act. Mr. Bresco. Good evening. Good evening. So we're looking for a special exception to expand outside seating from 12 seats which was previously allowed to 48, which we've been operating with 
through COVID for the last three years. Um, everything has been going pretty well over the last three years in terms of we have a lot of transient traffic, a lot of people from the hotel. We also have people that park down at the pavilion, plus a lot of walking traffic as well as people on bicycles, so on and so forth. We are primarily a takeout business. Uh, we are providing these extra seats so people want to stay, which for the most part does not last very long. They're here for 15, 20 minutes. Um, so what we're also looking to do is tent the back area where these seats are. We want to put a 20 by 50 tent, which would fit into the area from the property line to the street, as well as the rear um, property. It would be uh, at least about 20 feet off of the property line in the rear and 27 feet off of um, the property line to the street. It, uh, I saw something in there about uh, a mention of the, the building department and application. I will put it in an application for the tent once it's approved for you. Uh, it's my understanding that a tent without sides is not a building, but a tent with sides is a building. Okay. And you'll have to check with the building department. So what I know is if you propose a, a tent and it has sides on it and it's there uh, for, for a substantial amount of time, which is a fungible concept. Mm -hmm. But if it's there for the whole season, it becomes a building subject to all the building setbacks and coverage and limits in our regulations. Um, if it's a tent with open sides, it's a temper. It's more temporary than a building. Right. <laughs> And the business is the, open temporary. Didn't, didn't the governor, it, the it governor had seasonal. something to say in his executive orders under COVID about tents for outdoor seating and 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 when that expired and all that? There, it, it got complicated, believe me. But uh, uh, as as we stand today, there's no leftover COVID outdoor seating stuff. It's just what we have in our regulations now. But this and is a this is a temporary seasonal. operation, seasonal operation. Right. And right. from my recollection of what I read, I'm not seeing anything with enclosed sides. No. So the tent is primarily right now we have table picnic tables with umbrellas. Yep. So it's more so to keep the rain out, so we could actually have people sitting because when it's raining. Right. We don't have any people out there. And then also people complain about the sun, even though we have umbrellas, depending on how the sun is. So it's basically just to shade the area and keep precipitation. But no side, but but no sides. sides make a difference. No, no I, I don't have intentions of putting sides. sides. No. You're not proposing sides. No. It's not proposing any sides. Right. Okay. No screens, no plastic windows, correct. no no, correct. no <laughs> curtains, <laughs> no, right. no sides. No, <laughs> no sides. All right, then uh, with regard to the total number of outdoor seats, we have in our regulations that you're allowed to have an outdoor, three outdoor seats for every parking space. And then you can have it up to 50 additional. And is this under that cap? 40, yeah. 48. 48. 48. We're under that cap. That works. And the uniqueness of the location, because people will come by boat, They'll walk, yeah, correct, correct. they'll come from Sabre Point Inn or bike is that parking and, and from local knowledge, I've not seen issues with parking there at that in part prior seasons. So it would right. it, it, it works. So it's uh we need uh so we need date we need dates. We have dates for when the tent goes up and when the tent comes down. So I propose for I mean we don't normally open till mid May and then we try and stay open to the end of September. It's all depending on staffing. So but I propose for May 1st to um October 1st and right. the tent will be put up and then right. taken down at the end of the season. It could go up as early as May 1st, but it doesn't have to. Okay. And it could stay up as late as September 30th, but it doesn't have exactly. to. Exactly. <laughs> and um, your hours of operation? 11 to 7. We are closed Monday, Tuesday, so it's Wednesday through Sunday. So I was glad to see that there's no, no intent, no proposal, no application for outdoor speakers or music no, or no, any right. kind. Nope. Thank nope. you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, commissioners? 
Um, any acoustic entertainment, not using speakers. No, sir. No. No live music. No live music. No music whatsoever. Even states and I guess state and use. So I'll make a motion uh, to approve Liz Shack uh, application for modification special exception for restaurant use to expand outdoor seating to 48 seats with um, a tent exclusive of sides, windows, or any other obstructions on the sides of the uh, tent for the May 1st to October 1st uh, time frame with operating hours from 11 to 7, 7 Wednesday through Sunday. Correct. And no, 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 no outdoor, outdoor entertainment, entertainment or were, uh, live or piped. Correct. If that's the proper terminology, I might take my second there. the motion. Well, the session streamed. streamed. Yeah. And the second by Bob. Is there any, oh. any discussion? No. It's because of the conditions in the motion that it's suitable for its location because there are residential properties nearby. Correct. And we have considered their uh, enjoyment of their property and people sitting outdoors or under a tent eating a meal should not infringe on their enjoyment. But, and you've covered the things that ordinarily might infringe on their enjoyment of their property. So not hearing any further discussion, we we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, passes 500. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Uh, moving forward, uh, item B under new business, Cantina Beach, cease and desist order issued April 2nd, 2024, operating beyond hours of operation outlined in statement of use at 1596 Boston Post Road, Assessor's Map 26, Lot 24, B4 District, pedestrian node, business owner, Mr. Santiago Castro, property owner, 1600 Boston Post Road, LLC. And Mr. Castro? Hi, my Hi. name is Wilson. Oh, sorry. Uh, Santiago, he was in charge before the everything for the business. But a couple months before, like two months, I, I we have like a, Complaints to the people because of Santiago, he is like a, he don't talk nice with the people. Or something like the other parties decide to 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 sell the business to me, and I buy the whole business, and I'm in charge for everything right now. Uh, when did that happen? Like two months before. Two months, two ago. months ago. Yeah. I and I, I have I have the proofs in here. The when I, I I make the papers with the lawyer and everything, but because like two two months before everything is is, is not in control because they they try to, to like you know do whatever they want, but like two months before I I do I organize everything you know the kitchen the the stuff and, and everything and I try to you know to keep the place clean and everything. And she's she is she is talking to me and about because right now it's very slow and we don't we spend a lot of money and but we don't sell too much too much for right now because we have a different chef you know and, and they hiring a, a, a another guy and he's like Ecuadorian but right now we we have a, a Mexican chef. Like we change everything right now. And uh, me and her, she's my wife, Jesenia, and we're talking like like put like a couple more tables in the front, like five more more tables, but for the people come and enjoy outside the sun. And yeah, and the rest, I don't know, we try just like to to, to organize everything, like make make the things right. We have received the letter. I am just sending it back because uh, we have received on um, December the letter from um, the that we put flyers. We took out the flyers about the noise of, um, from Uruguay and night and Saturdays. 
um, they were saying that we are staying later than two in the morning. Then since we had that letter, we stopped because we saw the time frame that we had is until 1.30 a.m. So we closed until 1.30 a.m. So then we closed us 1.30 a.m. It take 30 minutes to clean everything out because it takes time to put the tables, the chairs, the plates and everything in order. So the next day for Sunday, it could be, you know, nice and neat for the next um, turn for the guys who come in in the morning to work the next day shift. So we already tried to, and plus we were trying the volume, we went a little bit down because we went outside and checked if it was making a lot of noise. So it wasn't making a lot of noise. We tried to lower everything. We obeyed everything. So Moby, we wasn't getting the letters. It was Cynthia was sending, so they were sending us the letters. So that's why we have none, we didn't the know the communication, so. So if I understand correctly, Mr. Wilson, is, is Wilson your first name or last yes. name? Yes. His first name, Wilson. It's my last name. Is your no, last Wilson is my first name. Okay. Castro. Castro is my last name. Oh, okay. All right, sorry about that. So. I'll say Wilson, make it easier, okay? Um, that you are now the sole owner of Cantina Beach. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, are you, there's a current statement of use uh, on file with us dated um, March 28th of 2023. Um, yeah. Are you, a year ago, are you amending your hours? Are you going to be making changes? Because if you are, we need to know what those are. Yes. And and review those. Mm -hmm. And from, uh, I believe, uh, Chris, that there is no outdoor uh, implication no, no. or... So, so right now, the business doesn't have a certificate of zoning compliance right. to operate. Right. And that's what you need to sign off on your final building permits. Okay. And that's the sidewalks. And there were some other things in the cease and desist that I pointed out there. Yeah. The neighbors yeah. then were saying that, um, so this is a follow up from our last meeting to fill them in, that remember the, the woman who came in with a liquor permit from the right. liquor commission that said that I signed off on their outdoor entertainment. It was the way the liquor commission wrote the letter. So on their thing, they have your permit is liquor and it's indoor. And then each endorsement, then it said patio, which we did approve the patio. And then it said entertainment, but it reads patio entertainment. If you read it that way, the entertainment was the indoor entertainment, not the outdoor entertainment. So I just want to clarify that from the, from the last meeting. And we left it that because no one was at the meeting to have someone come to the meeting right. to explain the status of the sidewalks and the improvements mm -hmm. because there was a temporary CO issue and that CO expired in February. So right now there's no CO and there's no zoning compliance. And there was the promise that the improvements would go in. So in good faith, we allowed you to open or operate the Santiago mm -hmm. to operate. So if you just bought the business, you bought the yeah. incomplete. The incomplete. Go, the, the, you bought the violations way. and you bought the. We bought everything <laughs> with the violations, with the complaints. And we understand. And like we came here to try to, to, try to give us everything. more time for the sidewalk. I know that we have, we got an estimate of 30,000 last day in one, two. We already did the estimate. I think they built the um, the Bernice Opinion, right? Yes, the so the survey. The survey, we did the survey. So we are on in that process to do the sidewalk. But the only thing we need more time because there's a lot of money on into it. Now it's just me and him. We're working on it. And about the patio, I know we didn't put like um we want more tables. I know we didn't get like a like a we need like a paper to do that. Paper. So I, I think the, the commission left it last time mm -hmm. that they didn't change the hours and they didn't want to change anything till you completed the improvements. Improvement. That's where you left it right. last time. That's correct. 
we were looking for compliance with the approval and progress towards getting the certificate of zoning compliance, the certificate of occupancy and the building department all to say everything is okay before we make any other changes. First do what should have been done and then we'll look at making changes. So first it's like you trying to say that we have to do first the sidewalk? That's the sidewalk and the finished final inspection and the outdoor speakers. And then later, those need to be removed. Any outdoor speakers? Okay. Okay. Also, the outs. This is a kind of speakers in Florida. So no point mm -hmm. in that. I'm sorry. I have to mm -hmm. try to make that. Okay. So there were. So we we can have no speakers outside. So six months ago, or probably eight months ago, we allowed for you to open yeah. without meeting those conditions. So we have to go back and do a whole other inspection and have. The sidewalk, but we haven't been back because we've been promised several times that the sidewalks would be in, and now we're to the point where the sidewalks are not in. You're temporary expired, mm -hmm. and that's where the commission and now the complaints. How much time do you need for the sidewalks? So that gets the biggest problem. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, maybe maybe we need uh, like. Four, four months or four months or yeah. five months because we go, we want to try to to make some money in this summer yeah because I I already spent a lot of money in but you realize you're operating without a certificate of occupancy current we didn't know that well, yeah we don't know that we know this mostly supposedly Santiago was coming here and he was saying oh everything's fine they didn't have no complaints. That's the only thing he was telling us. Did you get a Did you get a copy of the cease and desist order? No. Uh, so I, we're sending everything to the owner. Yeah, we have yeah on, on record. So is Roger's it? the owner. Oh, Roger. Roger's the owner, so and Sandel is, is with them. And he was well, it goes charge. to the it goes to the property owner, and then I think we might have sent it to the applicant. But there's been so many people involved. Yeah. It's who the who for? I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie. There were four people involved. It was him, his brother, Sandel, his cousin, and Byron. They all paid out. They all. Yeah. yeah. They didn't want to be in charge. They didn't want to organize. And um, we spent a lot of money. We put a lot of money on the restaurant. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna close the restaurant just for nothing. We understand. We're just trying it's to a lot. bring you up to up to date. So did, did the lawyer give you paper when you bought it? Did, like what about the liquor permit still in Byron's name? Yeah. Uh, he's still in he's still in in what else? That he sell he sell us everything because he didn't want to be in charge. But we spent a lot of money in the restaurant to start up. So you, you own the physical building? No, no, no. no. Just, the, just, the business. Business. just the business. The business. Yes. Okay. And there's a different property owner. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that was the property owner one of the four? No. 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 Okay. That's what you like it. Okay. Do we redo the? Well, I mean, there is. What do you redo? Well, do we send it to correct individuals that we may not have sent? Well, they're, they're the correct individuals. Okay. The property owner is not responsible. Okay. And the property owner is not responsible for the sidewalks? No, it's the applicant. So you have like a triple net lease. Okay. So the yes. property owner, pretty much, if I understand from the previous tenant, they're responsible for the property taxes, the building taxes, the roof, utilities. any repairs to the building, the utilities, and anything associated with their property. Is that not the roof? They in charge, the owner. I know the, the previous tenant, one of the oh, reasons no. that they left was because everything was their responsibility. So pretty much the property owner got a check and if the hood system was there was a problem they had to replace it that's what they had told me mm -hmm. so i'm assuming it's somewhat similar yeah, the hood we have to fix mostly yes a lot of stuff too. well the, the the zoning commission and 
needs to have the um, original application met. Um, there would appear to be some extenuating circumstances here that may or may not be part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, we understand your financial needs. However, the commission doesn't get involved in that or, or considerations over financial. So um, I'm not sure what we what we do here. Well, I mean, I think that one of the first things is we need to know for sure you're the owners. So that just you two. Yeah, I have the I have the proof. Have we got here. the papers that you already signed that Santiago gave it to him, Byron yeah. gave it to him, Wilson, the other his brother gave it to him. I don't know. So we need so I guess we need contact information mm -hmm. for you with your names as the property owner, maybe your email address. So first the, of all, we're sending the names to you if you're the representing emails, um already put it on Casino Beach. That's where you um emailing him. So I yeah, try to sure change. Yeah. So if you can just kind of leave your you know your name and your contact information, the correct ones, so that we're contacting you mm -hmm. if it's not Byron, if it's not whoever yeah. else is involved. I know Byron's still on the on the liquor permit. Yeah, he's still yeah. he already he saw us, but he's still on uh, the part of the team with us. He's helping a lot with yes. us. He's coming in and out. Any information mm -hmm. that we cannot we don't know, he's helping us mostly. But he's still in the permit of the liquor. So I mean, there's not much that I can no. do because there's no zoning compliance. Yeah. I mean, to go through. We we just need a like a little bit of time to. So I I try I try to 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 make the sidewalk the more fast possible, but everything is like I. I I call uh, some company to give me the estimate and give me like thirty thousand dollars, and I can I can pay this money, you know, in just like one one or two, and provide provide the 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 other partnership. I need to sell my house to to put the money because if I don't sell my house and I lose my my all my whole life, all his savings went there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say, but we we need to just like a keep open the restaurant. Like I don't know, maybe in three months more, the restaurant maybe they can make money and we can just make the sale fast. So what if you pick a date and continue to listen, have them come back and maybe you can give them some time for a temporary sale to extend it to that's one option. Mm -hmm. you say till June 3rd or July 1st to have them come back. I know you watch the compliance issues. It's a possibility. I think it was, I mean, I'm just trying to think of things yeah, that you we, 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 we could, to the commission, we could continue this until a future date and give them an extension on the CO and see where they're at at that point, determining what that date would be. And let's say it's our next, our first July meeting that they, come back, we give them a continuation of the CO to that point for them to be able to address the, the uh, uh, components of the zonings that they have not yet met. Huh? What if you do June? The last, the last one in June? Well, the zoning commission's meeting July 1st, which sometimes... No, oh, it doesn't always happen, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, so June, June 17th, June to come 17th. back with an update. Yeah. And then in the meantime, go through the window. Okay. Uh, what, what's the feeling on the commission on that? Uh, Bob, are you? Yeah. If we give it until June 17th, 
and, and allow them to an operate. extension of yeah. a, a temporary certificate of zoning compliance. Mm -hmm. zoning we don't issue temporary. Yeah. So I think the thing would be to have them come back on June 17th. We'll monitor the reports and the complaints from the neighbors. We'll give you the statement again. And then come back on June 17th and tell, tell us where you are. Does that seem? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no change to the March 28th statement of uh, 2023. We have the March 28th uh, statement yeah. of the Here, I wrote the date. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll put the zoning meeting. Hold on. Uh, and um, Chris is going to give you one with the with the data, and then you can give a report as to as to where everything is. Okay. So I'll tell the building department to give you through June seventeenth. Okay. And then you can just come back and. So I got a question. So, so for the starting for the um, for the sidewalk, we have to go through all the permits again. So you have your permits, and then mm -hmm. I know that there was you have to go to the state. I don't know if anybody went to the state. You have to get a permit from the state. So I know. What are they, what are they talking with? with uh, uh, some guy is going to help. Joe Ren was your engineer. Yeah, you know Joe. Yeah, and uh, the other guy he came over here in the town, and he I don't know if he's talking with someone here. But he say it's almost ready. Just I need to. So it's so it's not through the town. It's through the state. The state. The state. The state. So it's a, so what's happening is different people are coming in asking questions, and we send them to the state. That's why I'm asking who's in charge. Like, is it if you're the business owner versus somebody coming in and out, so that you get those answers too? Yeah. Because people come and say, "Oh, I need a sidewalk permit," and then they send them to Norwich to the state. Oh, okay. Because when you come back on the 17th, you have to have those answers for us. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it would be the two of you since you're now operating a business. Okay. And so you have to go back and do your homework with the previous other that were involved to find out what they did, if anything. Okay. To find out that. And then, yeah, you can just write down the best and, contact um, information. One, one if, if it's not a public hearing. So um, just for all of our sakes, we have an individual, one of the neighbors here tonight that's been uh, seated that uh, I can offer if you have any comments or questions that you want to direct at the commission or the, uh, the two new owners. Yeah. Ron Boulder, says six Orchard Lane. Um, I feel for obviously as everybody does. Um, my concerns are in order for this business to survive, certain things that are going to be the profitable side of the business is the negative side of what's happening in our neighborhood. You're saying that it's not loud. It's, I'm, I'm the next door neighbor immediately next door. It is loud. Mm -hmm. And it's not only loud at my house, but at my business, I had a neighbor that is halfway down the street and we were discussing it. And he was discussing about the thumb, the thumb, the thumb. Um, his concerns are like everybody else's. You know, summer's coming, windows are going to be open. We hear it very loud. You may not think this loud. I know you're concerned about your business. I know you're concerned about keeping it afloat. I can tell that. Um, but it can't be at our expense. And I see what you do in the course of a day, restaurant-wise. It's going to be very difficult to survive that way. The alcohol, the night. I can see that that is definitely a more profitable way of trying to put these fires out that are happening. And I don't know how our neighborhood is going to be able to handle that. It's, you're saying it's not loud. If you're saying it's not loud right now, I can only imagine trying to catch up with what's going on. It's even going to be louder. I was in there one night. I see 9.30 at night, 
Glasses start coming off the tables, tables get moved out, dance floor gets wide open, the DJ goes up, the lights go on. It, it's, it, it's, it's not a restaurant, it's become a nightclub. And unfortunately, you're in a residential neighborhood, even though you're on commercial property, you have 35 houses behind you, 11 on one side, 14 on the other, that you are affecting. And if this was happening in your backyard, I'm sure that you would be just as concerned about it. Um, my concerns are summer's coming. I wonder if going to be open. We want to be out in the backyard barbecuing. It, it, it's, I can see it's going to be a disaster. It already is a disaster, and it's not even summer months. So I don't know how we can address this. I, I know there's, there's a lot of feelings going on with the business. There's a lot of extensions being talked about. I, I, I'd rather be proactive instead of reactive. It seems like we're just reacting to what's going on in front of us. Um, and and I know I'm speaking for many of many of the people behind us. They they're throwing their hands up in the air. They they feel it's it's lost. You know, you didn't come to the last meeting. They say, well, you know, they don't care. So they're just kind of playing the game and you know going through the rabbit holes they can go to to stay out of. And and it's just it, it's just not fair. It's not fair. Well, the mu the music and the loudness of it is the biggest it's terrible. concern. Right? And it's not it, and it's not. The speakers that are out in front of your patio. I mean, it's you've got nice fun. music that's playing there. Or, you know, people that are sitting. It's, it's it's even though you're not supposed to have them there. That's not the problem. The problem is your DJ that comes in that just turns it into a major nightclub. It, it's like it's like sound view. It's like being out. You know, it, it's like it used to be. You know, all the the businesses that were there turn the music up, start at 10 o'clock at night, go until 1, 1 30 in the morning. That that was beach properties. There was people having fun. You're you're in a residential community. And I, I don't know, I don't know how it can be addressed. I really don't, because I can see that if it's just a restaurant part, I, I've seen what's going on for the last year. And and I've seen the restaurants before. I've been here for a long time. I've seen TNT pizza years ago. It used to be that. I've been here for a long time. I see what that property does. And you guys put a lot, a lot, a lot of money into that property. Uh, there, there's, there's no doubt. Um, I know Santiago. I, I talked to Santiago when he was doing the whole thing. I'm asking him how he thinks he's going to make this happen and throwing all his money into it with a triple net lease. I'm not it. I, I so, only so if they're continue. able to, the commission is giving them a, uh, an extension until the 17th, okay? You've heard what your neighbor has had to mm -hmm. say. So you, obviously there's a concern. Mm -hmm. So if it's not something that you can control and there's continued um, concerns, or issues that result to the police getting involved when we review things with you, that would be part of the discussion, okay? okay. Um, so taking that under consideration as you walk out of here this evening, I think one of the things that would be most beneficial to you is controlling the noise level. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then on the 17th, when they come back in front of us, we'll, we'll uh, see where they're at at that point. Yeah, yeah, that was so great. I, I know, I know you that. guys were open in the restaurant, believe me. We were all for it. We're, you did a great job. That you, you, you've taken a piece of property that's been that's been a high sore for many, many, many years. You did a great job. We were happy that a restaurant was going to quit. Yeah, the noise. It's not the noise. a restaurant anymore. Yeah. That's that's and you're and you're you're speaking with another business owner in the town of Old Saber. Mm -hmm. So he 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 understands too. So well, we're yeah. we kind of know yeah. each other right. from so, from their prior business. Yeah, I, I, I heard I heard to I don't know some someone told me that the neighbor is like make a complaint for for the noise, but we don't know who which one is. That was me. 
which um, I I'm, I'm speaking to you personally to yeah. try to put that so, fire off first. That was not me. No, I think there are next. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know what? Like yes. this time, no, we just agenda. I don't know if you heard like uh, one story with two wrong the music. And, and like, if it's too much noise, I promise we're going to, to try to make like a peace for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you for right. so, so, yeah. so just, just so that you know that the neighbors who came, they were at the last meeting and they've been writing letters. I know they contacted the Liquor Commission and then I contacted the Liquor Commission and because of it, the last meeting, they said that I signed a music permit for the patty, which I did. So the Liquor Commission said, well, do you want us to go out? I said, no, we were going to meet. But the other neighbor is pretty upset. So I wouldn't, I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if they pay you a visit. I told them we did not, we, we had it under control here. And then you're going to keep it under control. Okay. And I think her other complaint was the lights, yeah. the strobe lights out the window. It's all the DJ. And the, the DJ lights, lights are the, one, the lights that the oh. DJ does, yeah. and all the noise. flashing oh, lights yeah. and everything. Flashing, noise, and parking on, uh, on the lane. Yes, yeah. orchard. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. So, okay. Yeah, we're trying to. to Please, please do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Meeting and how it come come back on the seventh with an update unless there is some other violation that we need to have Sorry. I lost my stuff before. <laughs> so I shuffled it. So we continue with enforcement. We're continuing um, the sign regulations and distributing them to the business owners. We did it to all the businesses. And slowly the businesses are getting, so all the generic letters went out. We did a mass mailing that's going out with the assessors. And then um, we're also sending out not enforcement letters, but your property has been flagged with having something that may be a violation. Please take it down before there's an order. So we're really enforcing that. The donation boxes, the obstructions and parking spaces. So. That'll continue for a while. Public Works, I think I told you at the last meeting, did a nice sweep. They're probably going to have to do another one because we have a whole other round. Um, I think that's really it. I think I gave you a pretty thorough stuff two weeks ago. The one thing I did want to talk about, uh, and it's a little hard to read, so I apologize for not. So, and I apologize for being tiny. I had a, I tried to print a large copy. So this here, um, and you may have heard a little bit about, so this is one Overlook Drive and 177 Springbrook Road. So on Springbrook Road, there was quite a bit of clearing and there were all kinds of rumors of what was going on. So the property with the house purchased the lot next door and the proposal is, and they did come in and ask if they had to have a permit to clear, which in this area of town, they don't. And there's nothing we can really do to stop them. And the proposal is to merge the lots 
and then it's a little bit of a, a mixture of uses. So there's a barn here and I have to kind of, let me just, so the magnifying tool on your phone for the barn. So it's about a little over 6,000 square feet, the barn and 17 feet high. And then they have the house with the two other garages. So the proposal is to plant corn and other vegetables after they build a garage, have 20 chickens in a coop, and then have a self-serve farm stand. And then the barn would also be used for storage of equipment owned by the property owner who is- What kind of equipment? Well, some large equipment and some of it may, could also be used for demolition, but some of it could be used. So we have a, it's a residential zone, which doesn't allow for the business use. We've got this somewhat agricultural use here with a 6,000 square foot barn with a little house, but we've got three acres or so. And I'm sorry, I can't, it's too, you can't read it. Um, I, I know where there are, there's an excavator, there's a, a piece of equipment that's stored in a yard on Pepper's Trail. Mm -hmm. and it's unsightly and the neighbors, especially the immediate neighbor hates it, but it continues to be there. Or they put up a temporary Quonset type tent over it to hide it. This is not a good idea in a residential zone. And if they're proposing to store equipment in the barn and something else is in the barn, then the equipment's outside and that's <clears throat> that's really bad. So going to the AA1 zone though, we have a few things that we allow. So this is why we're discussing right. it. And the, the AA1 zone, we allow- The is AA1 also. Yeah, but we allow farms. Yeah. We allow barns. We allow chickens. Yeah. We so allow like, residential houses and we well, allow- I thought there was a limit on chickens. So There's it's a, a maximum of 20 unless you have the five acres. Oh. So they're proposing, they were going to propose fewer. And I said, why don't you just put 20? Because what will happen is you're going to go from 14 to 20. So at least we do the max. And if you have 10, it's easy. So it's kind of a- hodgepodge of AA1 uses. Yeah. So the one question to that I had is that if you go to section 53. Yeah, special standards for special, special uses. uses. <laughs> and you go to livestock and poultry. Uh. I mean, there's, So on a lot of less than five acres, but not less than 80,000 square feet, they don't want equine bovines or llamas. We went through that. They can have an aggregate of not more than 20 chickens or other poultry. Um, they're not proposing roosters because they live there and they said they have their own alarm clocks. Good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so by... Which one sneaks in? So they may be actually may be permitted by special permit, provided that the building or shelter which the animals are kept is located not less than seventy feet from any property or street line. I just read that wrong. And a lot of not less than eighty thousand one in equine bovine. Other an aggregate of not more than twenty chickens. Other poultry may be permitted by special exception permit, provided that any building or shelter in which the animal are kept is located not less than 70 feet from any property or street line. So they could do that. No, the barn's too close to the property line. But if they don't put animals in it. Where are the animals gonna be? They're gonna propose a shelter in between the house and the barn so that they can monitor. Not less than 70 feet, feet from any property. Line. Which they could do. 
if you could see it, I apologize for not having a large copy. They could fit it smack in the middle and make the 70 feet for the chickens. And then they would have the barn for equipment and whether it's in cars and vehicles and personal uses and then have the cornfield and then have the shelter for the farm stand in the front. Perfect. What are we thinking here? I, I did ask for a detailed statement of use. I was very clear that it couldn't be a business. You can have a farm. You can have a farm, farm stand. stand. Farm stand, farm stand is, is a farm stand a business? Yeah. It's not farm business. stands allowed in the residential right. districts. Okay. Farm stands are. Okay. Farming is allowed. Yeah, okay. you also sell peppers for you. I think it might be and they're willing to do worth, worthwhile to have the applicant come in for a discussion. So we have a clearer picture of the intended use and operation. So in the use, it's I mean it's definitely it's clear it's as of right a farm with a roadside stand is permitted. So those are the zoning regulations, and that's our concern. Out, maybe outside of our concern, outside of our powers, but a separate question that might come into play, does the property have any deed restrictions regarding poultry? And are, who enforces those other than like an HOA or something? Because usually that's written in by the developer when a, when a neighborhood is built. They don't want some newbie putting in mm -hmm. the chicken coop mm -hmm. if they still have unsold lots nearby. Oh, yeah. So oh, there yeah. may be like sunset gates on that kind of stuff, but I'll take a look and see if there's it's a big still viable area. deed restrictions over there, which might be different from them. I kind of doubt it. Sorry, I'm using my phone as the magnifying glass. Right. If you look at this house, it's here, 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 and here. Right? It's on the phone. It's right on the bed. The yeah, neighbors complained the about the clear cutting. Oh, everyone's Everybody. complained about the clear cutting, but then everyone thinks that they're getting six or seven houses there, and they don't want the six or seven houses. Yeah, and they come in all angry because yeah, they don't want houses. all this traffic, but then this is the use. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting twist to it. How bad is that? So, I mean, they could go through the lot size is 40,000 square feet. So they could add additional houses or. Is this, yeah. is this an occasion where the zoning commission uh, could have a public hearing, even though one is not required? The zoning commission has the ability to say we'll have a public hearing and it opens on this date and it's not the same as a special exception public hearing it's got its own stuff going on you have to review it if it's a site plan well but here, here's this is kind of the what, other what, is it a site plan or a special exception well <laughs> going back to livestock and now you made me get back on the So on a lot of not less than 80,000, the bovine, blah, 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 or not more than 20 chickens, other poultry, or rat, rabbits may be permitted by special exception. Oh, so it would be a, oh, a special exception even for their limit of 20 chickens. More than 25. More than. More than. Oh, so it's not a special exception if it's... 20 or less. Well, this is kind of where I'm going right. so with that, it. Well, that, you, that's why I bring it up where we could still have a public hearing, even though it's not, not a special, special exception. exception. And then the neighbors would have their chance. Well, we're, say. but I'm in a difficult position because it looks like it's as of right. A farm is as of right. A barn is as of right. Right. So, I mean, I could just bump it up to the oh, commission. Oh, so there would be no. Well, site. that's kind of where no. I'm thinking maybe it would be bumped up to the commission. Uh, on a lot of not less than 80,000, you can have up to 20 chickens per special exception. So I guess it may trip the special exception 
because they have less than five and more than 80, less than five acres and more than 80,000. So unless they only had five chickens. So I guess we need to figure that out. I asked them to put together some kind of a statement of use explaining this, but there's been a lot of talk because everybody saw the clear cutting clear and there was like, how many houses are going in? And, but they did, they did stop it and say, we're buying the property, we're merging it, we're going to put a barn on it, do we need, you know, they asked. So your question to the commission is? What do you think of this? It's kind of a, I mean, you've got a barn that's 6,000 square feet with a little house, but you have an agricultural use. It's unique. So there's got to be five chickens or less, and that's it. And it's good to go. What happens after that's up to him. Well, statement of use certainly would be useful in the situation. They're working, I they're, spoke they're, with they're the working on it. And I think a discussion in front of the commission would be helpful for the commission to understand what it is that they're looking to do as well. So we can invite them to one of our upcoming to our next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. That makes sense. Good idea. Okay. Okay. It's just not your normal. No, it's not, it's not normal. And I mean, but I could see a situation where you have a house, but then you're on a farm. So your barn could be bigger than your house. Right. Let's say you had cattle or horses or something. It's interesting. Of those things where the regulations appear to allow it, even if it's not a great idea, right? <laughs> but it's one of those that never really come. It's not a normal request, it's a rarity, it's, yeah. It's rare. That's it. the only other farm in Old Saber is David Brown's, right? Hell Maynard, Maynard, is that uh, operated? <laughs> well, I mean, there's other people who have farms, but they're not potentially your conventional. Mm -hmm. um, Someone grows hemp in one area of town. There's another person with blueberries. Oh, okay. Um, but it's kind of, it's not like David. We all know David and Aaron drove by, drove by, knew it was there. Maynard drew drive by. There's yeah. just places in town north of 95 mm -hmm. that do have farms. It's just you don't really hmm. think about it. And then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Seconded by John Henry. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much, everyone.